is what we tell our parents all the time. This is our foundation. You need, you need to have a solid foundation. So um, this is really important for the higher upgrade. So a lot of the times our conversation with parents is, listen, let's think about the future. You know, foundation phase is so important. If a child needs to repeat a foundation phase, if, uh, grade or whatever, it is really important. Because, I mean, to go higher up, you need to have that foundation phase problem. You know, reading, writing, and I think I think there's such a stigma around children repeating a grade. There is. And and I think it's 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 in uh, it's an injustice to the learner really to try and put that that, that societal stigma. No, for sure. And a lot of parents would um, rather let the child progress mm. because they're because afraid of what the sure. what the friends think, what the family would yeah. say is like, oh my child failed grade one. Yeah. When at the end of the day, it's not about failing, no. it's about ensuring that the, that the foundation is there. It's like, exactly. Hi, my name is Francois Nordia and I am a super teacher. And this is Super Teachers Unite, the show that's all about motivating, inspiring and supporting teachers. And with me today, I've got a very special super teacher, Desiree van Amaro. Thank you very much for being with me, Desiree. It's such a pleasure. <coughs> so, before we jump into this episode, um, I'd just like to make sure that all of you just want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking time to um, watch these videos and support teachers and um, just taking part in all of the initiatives on this channel and all the other social media platforms. Thank you so much. But... As you know, the first five to 10 minutes of this show is all about value for teachers. What is the most amount of value that we can get to teachers? And for that, I'm gonna hand over to Desiree very soon. But first, let's educate. Desiree, Thank you so much. The floor is yours. You've got five to ten minutes. The two of us will chat, but I know you've got some things on your heart that you'd like to share with teachers. Yes, I do. Um, okay, so Francois, <laughs> this is my first time, so uh, just give me a <laughs> moment. No, that's cool. It's like, <laughs> this is what I love about this show. It's like we're capturing teachers in their natural habitat. We are in Desiree's <laughs> classroom. She's a grade one foundation phase teacher. So um, it's awesome to see a print-rich classroom and to see the, the classroom without the kids. I would have loved to see the kids. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's a story for another day. Another day. But this is such a... a it, this entire show should be a chilled conversation between two teachers trying to solve the world's problems. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so today on my heart specifically, I want to talk about teacher appreciation, which okay. is kind of my passion. It is um, something that started a few years ago at our school uh, when there was really a big need for it. So we felt um, the teachers were low. Uh, like you all know, it's difficult being a teacher. There's a lot of admin on us, a lot of uh, pressure from oh, everywhere. Uh, so a few years ago, we decided, you know, we need something to build up our teachers at our school, um, except for the once a term bribes that they, they sometimes have. So um, we are, so two years ago, we decided we're going to um, try and get sponsors for our school corporate sponsors, small businesses to um, help us in giving a little gift here and there to a teacher, a uh, sponsor of spa voucher, uh, we did some lucky draws, um, we had amazing people um, sponsor lavish lunches uh, for our teachers which were also amazing um, and from that we learned that the community really are behind teachers. So that's very, that's very interesting. Because we can easily as teachers just feel that we're not appreciated. Mm. Um, this job is so difficult. I mean, having 30, 35, 40 kids in your class, and especially in the foundation phase, you have them the entire day. You have them the entire day. Um, and the challenges that come with, with, as you said, with teaching, especially the admin, and um, the national discourse at the moment around discipline. Yes, yes. It's so quick that we lose morale. We, we get demotivated and then we also feel that communities and the rest of society doesn't necessarily support teachers exactly. and that's yeah. the quickest that a teacher feels unappreciated yes. and then that spills over into the classroom no, for sure. but it's yeah. awesome hearing that you actually experience that the community wants to appreciate and support teachers yes. no for sure i really feel the communities um like i said i've asked about i can't remember how many people i've asked uh, to help us with sponsorships and I had one say no to me. So I really believe the community wants to get behind teachers and um, 
yeah, so I was super excited about this. We had all these these lavish gifts, and um, so that was really nice. But that wasn't really the the, the main aim in the end. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't just get happy for giving for getting gifts. You know, yeah. we, we had to look at the culture of the school and everything. Um, so we decided, you know what? We also want the children to get involved. We want the parents to be involved. Um, and yeah, so we had this year we started our teacher appreciation week, which is my. Um, yeah, my proud, my what do you call it? My, my your pride, pride and joy. <laughs> my pride and joy. Yes. It's a, your your to the one one initiative that you are yes. in charge of. Yes, and is I started teacher appreciation week. Yes, so that it was also an initiative that that started from nothing. Um, we have a fantastic principal who believes happy teachers make happy students. So he said, you know what? Um, let's let's do it. Let's see what happens if we do a teacher appreciation week. So this week. Oh, this this year or this actually this term we uh, did it uh, what wings to five November World Teacher Day just the week after. Oh, so five, five October International five Teachers October. Day. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, five October is National or International Teachers, Teachers Day. Day. Yes. So you did it the following week. And the following week, he, uh, my my principal said, "Well, you have three days for." A, a week program or whatever um, next year for sure it's going to be all week <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know yet but, no, <laughs> but now you do, <laughs> now you do yeah. so it's gonna, it was three days and uh, we sent out these amazing letters the theme for the week was superheroes uh, my teacher is a superhero actually and okay stop we have to stop there yeah what an amazing theme <laughs> I mean that. Inspired. I mean that. That resonates so well with me. This concept of being a super teacher, and I like this in the my teacher is a superhero. Yes. And so that was the theme for the week. That was the theme. Yeah. So we went uh, on a Wednesday. They got this uh, little letter that they took home, um, just to give them a guideline. The the grade sevens and the grade sixes they didn't need to follow that letter. They could make their own one, you know. But for the foundation phase specifically, we sent out a letter. The letter had questions like, um, or sentences they needed to complete, like, my teacher always says, uh, my teacher's superpower is, um, and a few other questions that they needed to fill in. The parents helped them as well. And then they brought it to us on the Wednesday, which was so awesome. And um, a lot of teachers still refer to some of those letters. They still say, oh, you know, this little kid in my class said this, and this one says, oh, my superpower is, um, uh, I have eyes at the back of my head was no one in my class and which all teachers do <laughs> yes all teachers do um, and laser eyes apparently that's a big one also I'm very fast <laughs> yeah. that's my superpower I think when I walk down the corridors with them <laughs> she's really fast um, and then um, yeah we got these letters which motivated a lot of teachers I got a lot of good feedback on it so a lot of teachers came back to me even one teacher did a whole assembly on those letters and read it out and said this is how amazing our teachers are and wow. we did a, this amazing thing and then um, on I, the I wanna, I'm sorry for interrupting yeah, I just yeah. I want to stand still on this this thing about appreciating teachers and buying gifts because typically it happens at the end of the year the last yes. day of school yes. parents and the, the learners they come in with like a box of chocolates or exactly. bultong or but we don't stop doing that though. <laughs> if you want don't stop that's cool but if you really want to know what would make a teacher what, what a teacher would appreciate like touch their heart yeah for sure why are we sure. why are we teachers exactly we love the kids exactly so getting that feedback and yeah. how the children appreciate us yeah yeah um, makes all of the difference and just gives you a little bit more energy gives you that, that exactly look push. we all have those moments right in your class where a child suddenly gets something and you feel oh this is fantastic but they are few and far between sometimes you know so you you're not getting that every day so this is kind of a day where you get bombarded with letters and saying you're so amazing and this is so good and, and then you just feel oh that whole, <laughs> whole week you just feel like you have this day like so it was really awesome um yeah so that was the wednesday okay. thursday they could uh we didn't want anyone to pay for anything so even the parents didn't have to pay for anything. Some did actually send gifts, but it wasn't necessary. Let's let's touch on that because I do yeah. think that's that's very valuable in the sense that you got uh, sponsors from the from the community. Yes, we did for some gifts. So we had um, like it's all surprise gifts. I never tell anyone about my sponsors <laughs> beforehand. So in the morning, the teachers come to school in the staff room. There'll be donuts. Or the next day they'll come to school and they'll be we had stereo stumpies this time or whatever so so and that I all get from sponsors okay. so um, which is very nice by the way but you I don't love it. <laughs> but you don't you don't want teachers or learners to pay out of their pocket no, not for at this all. because in, in our in our discourse in the country at the moment yeah. if you're looking at the economy yeah. it's it's difficult for everybody to participate as soon as you start 
charging um, for an event or start yes, charging yes. for, uh, no, for an event. No, we didn't want the, the, the parents or the community to actually be paying anything, um, but all the teachers in the in fact. So that we, yeah. We so how, and I think this would be valuable for the audience, especially people who are nervous going out asking for funding, asking for sponsors. Yes. How did you do it? How do you get the guts to go up to somebody and say, give me money? <laughs> I get this, all, I, I, this question so many times from all the teachers in my school. They always say, how do you do it? Um, look, I'm not one of those people who go with my little um, paper and ask, listen, can I have a donation? Donation not list, please. Yeah. Emails. Okay. <laughs> this is why you all see it today. <laughs> Don't uh, emails. Th that's, that's very true. And we'll, we'll discuss that a bit later on on how I ended up in your classroom. Now other teachers can, uh, we can have this interaction with other teachers. But, but emails work very, I think it's just an efficient way to do it. So I sent emails out to a few companies, some big companies, some small companies. Um, and to who? Who at the companies do you send your email to? Look, this is tricky. Okay. Because not all you, companies have a direct contact to the, the guy in charge or the marketing guy or whatever. So you have to, to, to I don't know, pray about it. I don't know. <laughs> I just can't kind of get it. I don't know. I, I get those numbers somewhere. Okay. So, so you get those email addresses. Yes. But like, give me one example. You don't have to mention the, the person or the company, but just like the, the methodology on getting that email address. Okay, so I can tell you. So the, okay, so the one company um, is a big company. So they have lots of different emails and, and whatever. And I just chose a random one of a person that's the closest I feel to me and I emailed that person and that person sent an email back and said I'm so sorry we cannot help you or whatever and I left it I mean if they say no it's no it's fine um, you go on with your life and then the next day I got an email back from the same company from a different person like in the marketing, te marketing team of that company who said you know what maybe we will help you. And that's how so obviously that individual and that company yes. started having discussion, passed it on, yes. passed it on to somebody that yes. they know. And I think here's the here's a cool tip: that if you want a sponsorship, mm. like you don't go out and say, "Please give me money." Mm. You no, can no. you can ask them. I'm having this initiative, yes. giving details about the initiative, not, not maybe not a long email because no, who's got time to read emails? Yeah, yeah. But you give a short description, yes. and then you ask. Do you know of somebody that can or would want yeah. to sponsor? No, for sure. Because yes. you don't put the pressure then on that individual. Exactly. Like, like would you give me money? No. Or would do you know somebody yes. who would be willing to? Yes. No, for sure. And also, what you can do because a lot of teachers also know people and they have friends who are with companies who want to sponsor teachers. So, um, in the last now this teacher appreciation week, we had teachers who got sponsors from family who felt they want to join this initiative. So, it's who you know. <laughs> it's, it's who you know. Teachers know a lot, a lot of people. Of people. <laughs> we are so connected. <laughs> it's true, but, but it's really amazing. I really, sometimes I, I stand in awe at this whole thing just happening. Like, it just works out. I don't know. How but you had to take the first step. You had to approach somebody, yes. take the initiative, I'm going to send an email yes. and see what, what comes what back. Look that I feel. They can always just say no. And then what? And then what? We need to get um, comfortable with rejection. Exactly. Because I actually tweeted about this this morning. It's your biggest success yeah. lies at the back of a big pile of steaming rejection. Because yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a volume scam. Because exactly. if you ask 10 people and one says no, mm. or one says yes, you're fine. Mm. If you ask one person and one says no. And if you never ask anybody, what are you going to get? Exactly. Nothing. So I, I, I love that approach and I think that's very yeah. valuable for a teacher. Sorry, I interrupted you. No. You were on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It happens no. quite a lot. No, so on Thursday we, um, uh, yeah, so they, on Thursday kids could bring, um, sing a, a working group, they could make a poem, they could do a poster, they could do a dance, they could do basically anything they want to make their teacher feel special. special. And then, um, yeah, and then I, I told Francia, uh, on Thursday it was so quiet. We didn't really, nothing really happened. So the kids much. weren't really buying into. No, into so that. I thought you know nothing is going to happen. But then on Friday, suddenly all these kids pitched up at your door, singing songs, and we had posters come up in our staff room, and I had poems in my own class of kids who made poems for me. So um, I had a dance in my class, and a lot of teachers. Um, I saw that day a lot of kids going around. They like sent the grade seven 
group to come around all the classes to sing the song to the whole school. So it was quite fun um, with that. And also, yeah, so that was when it actually happened. Okay. Thursday's event actually went over to Friday. Oh, but right. it was awesome in the end. The kids loved it as well because suddenly these big kids come singing in your class. It's really, it was amazing. And then uh, on Friday, we the teachers had to dress up as superheroes. We also got a sponsor who said, okay, but they'll give gifts to the best dressed grade and then also to the two best dressed teachers, the one in foundation phase and then the one in intermediate phase. Okay. So um, initially when I told the teachers you have to dress up, I got a lot of size. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and I told the teachers, listen, just imagine how cool it would be if you walked out of this staff room in the morning and you are wearing this amazing superhero uniform. How cool would that be? And I think that maybe resonated because then um, Friday morning when I came to school, everyone was dressed up. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it was so cool. You should have just seen it. It was amazing. We had from Wonder Woman to Batman. I think my principal was Batman. Um, we had Super Cow. <laughs> <laughs> from, from Cow and Chicken. How yeah, cool is that? It was so cool. We had um, a minion. <laughs> Super minion. Hey, it's what you make of it. It's, it also shows you teachers can be creative. They were so creative. So we, um, we, it was so much fun. So everyone, and you could just feel the mood lift. Um, it was just amazing. In the staff room, we played, you know, the Superman, Batman song. Everyone was dancing. It was really, really cool. And everyone really bought into the idea, which was so cool. And um, yeah, so then the, the students could also dress up that day. They could dress it in their teacher's favorite color. So. If you said it was green, then they had to dress green. If oh, okay. was, yeah, so this way they get to know a bit more about the they're teacher. They're the sidekicks. Ah, the okay. Oh, how girls. cool is that? Yeah, so they're the sidekicks. Yeah, <laughs> foundation phase, me. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so we did that. And then, um, yeah, so what I told you as well, so when we went out of the staff room in the morning, obviously there was a lot of photo taking and everything happening. And then when we came down to the classes, the students just freaked out. All the learners were running around and saying, oh, who's that? That's, I don't know, this is, this, you know. Is that a so a lot of excitement around you. Lots of excitement. Oh my soul, I, was, I thought a few kids were gonna pass out. They were so excited. <laughs> seeing the teachers in these costumes. And, wow. and even the, the grade sevens, we thought, you know, they're not really going to love this as much. I also loved it. Even when you started walking from your car, in your outfit going to the staff and you already had these faces and you know kids stopped playing soccer just to see what my teacher's wearing and it was just such an amazing day in the end you know and yeah so we had superpowers that day uh, in our specific corridor the teachers were flying <laughs> <laughs> and the students just loved it they absolutely loved it so i mean it just, just from a school culture point of view how amazing is this event just for everybody involved yes um I, I, I think we'd struggle to find a child that day that said school wasn't fun. Yes, no, for sure. No, they absolutely love the day. They still talk about the day. The ring I'm actually wearing is my power ring. And I'll tell you now in my class, this is Mam's power ring that she wore that day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so they, they still remember it. They still refer to it. So, And I had a lot of emails afterwards of teachers who said, oh, can't we do this every term? You know, this is just so uplifting and we just love it and, you know, so so I think it was good for us. I could see after that, you know, the spirit of the school just lift, you know, people were just more excited to come to school. Suddenly, um, kids, you know how a kid feels about you, you know, when they told you all these nice things about you, you actually feel, okay, now this one was a behavior problem, he actually loved me in any case, so you, you feel, you feel... Know, it's about building that relationship exactly. with, the, with yeah. the learners. I, I always do this, I'm hearing uh, one of my audience members screaming at me because they're sitting there and they're saying, Desiree, okay, great, this is fine, this worked for your school. Yeah. Never in my life is this going to happen at the school that I'm at. Why not? No, but, but <laughs> that's exactly what I ask. But I promise you now we're going to have colleagues that can be very cynical about what you just said. Yeah. Because in your school, maybe that's yeah. something that you can do. But in their specific school, there's no way nobody will ever go for it. Yeah. Do, you have, do, you have, do you have advice for that teacher that feels like in my school this will never work? Look, I think you should actually look beyond the teachers. Because usually I think it comes into that teachers are not willing to participate necessarily. And if you change your viewpoint and say, listen, 
let's focus on the learners. Is this going to benefit the learners? Is this going to do something towards the learners' uh, mood and their attitude towards school? And, um, you know, I can even say my students, you know, we had students um, in term three, which we are still friends with. So we sent them pictures of the day. And they even said, this is fantastic. You know, I was, I was wondering about teaching if, if it's really for me. And after I saw this, I just knew this is for me, wow. you know? So we have, we have um, I feel, look at the broader, picture of this thing is it is it what is it going to mean to your learners and to everyone who sees your school I mean, wow. that's 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 what i, I call true that leadership this is not just somebody that says that we have to improve teaching we have to try and make school more fun this is actually a practical way in which we can make school more fun oh, yeah and we yeah. should i really think we should it's a really it's a it, we teachers are getting a lot of negative vibes i think um from everywhere now and we need to do something actively to change that. I, we can't, I can't just agree leave with you it, more. you know. <laughs> and exactly. Social media, mainstream news, everything is just showing the negativity in education. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of negativity. It's there. But us focusing on just the negative things and highlighting the negative things is not going to improve the situation. No, for sure. Let's rather make positivity louder. No. Let's go and showcase the positive things that happens in schools and in uh, in classrooms and we just start sharing that on social media and we start sharing that with with journalists in the area um, and and put that into the community newspaper because yeah. if all of the teachers in our country start doing that i feel that the status of teaching the status of education and the the, the perception we have about education can be turned onto its head no for sure and i think so and you know what i think we're losing a lot of people who want to study teaching, but now they hear so much negativity about teaching, so, so they say, you know what, it's maybe not for me. And um, we need them. You exactly. Know? I mean, the worldwide, we have a teacher shortage, so I mean... Let's get let's more get teachers, more teachers. but let's in order to do positive. that, we have to show that there are positive things in the class. And I can promise you, on a daily basis, more positive things happen than negative things that happen. Mm. Although we like to talk about the negative things. Because right? our national sport is complaining. <laughs> that's what that's what South Africans, but teachers in specific, yeah. our national sport is complaining. For sure. But now, okay, we've talk, spoken a lot about teacher appreciation, but I think it's time to get to know you a bit more. Tell us about your background. How did you decide to become a teacher? Um, okay, so um, I've been teaching about for about thirteen years now. Um, I probably started teaching, or it was I felt it was my calling. Um, when I was younger, I did a lot of outreaches with our churches and stuff, and um, went to work in rural communities a lot um, with the church and so on. And I mean, uh, there we did children's ministry and children's camps and children's whatever, and oh, it was just a fit. I just knew after that, you know, this is what I need to do, and um, I've been loving it since. And the rest is yeah. history, the Ob rest is obviously. History. Yeah, no, yeah. and I mean, a lot of times, you know, you get those days where you feel it, and I don't want to do this. I am not doing this anymore. And then, yeah, it always comes back. <laughs> I think I would never leave teaching. It's just, yeah. Yeah. You know, I always complain and say, oh, this is my last day. Oh, yeah, it's never going to be like that. Okay. Yeah, so you, you started it. studying teaching from, from the get-go? Yes, from You're, the get-go, yes. So did you do a, a, a B8 in foundation phase? Yes, B8 foundation phase. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. And then you became yeah, a teacher and you're in front of the class? Yes. And yeah, and I've been loving it. I only think I, I stopped a little bit when I had my, my own kids. Um, I have three of my own kids. And um, yeah, after that I went back. Grade one is probably my passion. I, I love grade one. I just love it to bits. I've done grade R and grade one. Never went higher, um, but I absolutely love it. I, I think you have to be a special teacher to teach grade one. Oh, I, no, I agree. I, I agree. You have to be a special person to be a teacher. I mean, you have to be a special teacher to try and go into grade one. In grade That's, one, they start with not doing anything. And at the end of the year, they can read and write. That's like a miracle. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, it, I, I agree. Um, it's, it's, it's so, so important, especially that... I mean, the, we've got this thing, the first thousand days of a child's life is extremely important. Yeah. The first seven years of their life is extremely important yes. to solidify concepts and to basically get momentum for their learning journey. Exactly. So in grade one, it mean, by, by the end of grade one, um, it's, it's so, so difficult to try and repair yeah. damage that was been done in the first seven years. Yes, now of course. Yeah. So you've, grade one teachers, 
you guys are absolute like gems and we we appreciate all the great one teachers out there um but um uh, i wanted to ask you a question now but now it slipped my mind but i mean we can get back to it if it if it pops up again um oh i want to i want to make a statement i want to hear whether you agree with it okay. so there's a there's a lot of focus on grade 12 and matric and rightly rightfully so i think yeah, no, no, um sure. yeah. the the matric results are important and so forth but people always ask like why or where does grade 12 start? Uh, okay, what's the statement? Where does okay. grade 12 start? So, that's a question. No, 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 that's a question. Okay. But then the statement that I make on that is grade 12 starts in grade 1. Okay, yes. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. No, for sure. I mean, um, we're building up to grade 12 here. This is a... Um, it's a, whatever they call it, it's not a race, it's a marathon. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's so valuable. <laughs> we so, need to work, we start from grade 1 um, to to get there. Yeah. Of course. Well, we start earlier, hopefully, but yeah. when you go yeah, to yeah, formal yeah. education, we can't just be focusing on high school. We can't just be focusing on no, grade 12. No, no. Support needs to be given at the lowest of levels, and I mean that not in the sense of like it's low the derogatory, I mean like at the start, at the yeah. base. We have to form that, that's why it's called the foundation exactly. phase. Look yeah. at me just going, uh, oh. talking ideology again. but. Like, if we yeah. don't support grade ones and grade one teachers, mm -hmm. it makes it so much more difficult yeah, to, no, to try and reach in grade yeah, 12. This is what we tell our parents all the time. This is our foundation. You need, you need to have a solid foundation. So um, this is really important for the higher upgrade. So a lot of the times our conversation with parents is, listen, let's think about the future. You know, foundation phase is so important. If a child needs to repeat a foundation phase, it, uh, grade or whatever, it is really important because, I mean, to go higher up, you need to have that foundation laid properly. Yeah. You know, reading, writing. And I think, basic, basic I think there's such a stigma around children repeating a grade. There is. And, and I think it's, 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 in, uh, it's an injustice to the learner really to try is. and put that, that, that societal stigma. No, for sure. And a lot of parents would um, rather let the child progress mm. because they're because afraid of what the, what the friends think, what the family would yes. say. It's like, oh, my child failed grade one. Yeah. When at the end of the day, it's not about failing, okay. it's about ensuring that the, that the foundation is there. Is laid, exactly. And the thing is, in grade one, grade two, grade three, the social um, skills or the social, it's not as much as the higher grades. Mm. So let's build that foundation now. If they need to rebuild for another year or they need to go do a repeat another year, they make new friends, you know, they are, what do you call it, resilient? Yeah. They um, don't really, it doesn't really matter as much, you know, when, except when you have your best friend in grade seven and now you need to be kept a year back. No, let's do it now. I, I agree with you. And a bigger conversation needs to be had with parents and with communities in, in, in taking away the stigma about repeating grades. Exactly. What's the difference if we really think about it in, in a greater scale? In completing your schooling in 12 years or 13, what is the big difference? It, there is no difference. Yeah. Anyway, I might be taking a gap year and then starting <laughs> studying. So what does it matter? So take your gap year a bit earlier. Exactly. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. But because parents have got the stigma, oh, my child failed, we are doing an injustice to that learner. Yeah, that learner. But I, I do also appreciate, I'm hearing the screams and it's going to be in the comment section everywhere um, about this. I, I do know it's a more complicated, more complex scenario than what we're making it out to be. Yeah, yeah. But I think a conversation has to be had about your child's success isn't your success. Exactly. Look, there is individual cases, right? So we can't make a broad statement necessarily because there are individual cases you need to look at for reasons it needs to be looked at. But. Um, Generally, I think repeating a grade is better than saying let's just keep on going because Hope, the, hopefully no, yeah, the kids got to pick it up somewhere. Yeah, no, that's no. not not the ideal. No. But uh, well, I think it's a it's a conversation to be had, no, and sure. we've just raised our opinions on it. And let's see in the comment section of all of the various places where this video will go up Should what comes up. <laughs> let's see what happens, and then. But this is what I love is the is the debate. It's the the constructive. A conversation mm. that happens around these types of videos and these types of topics mm. and we shouldn't shy away from from conversations like this no for sure no we should you know keep a conversation going in any case so people can think about this really 
think about. And we can learn from each other. For sure. Because I come from a specific bias and you come from a specific bias and only being exposed to your point of view, I can go and revise my point of view. No, of course. That's why these yeah. conversations are important. Okay, so um, the final part of these episodes, the guests never know. <laughs> it's unprepared. So I, I love this section. Um, I used to call it a quick fire round, but it doesn't end up being quick because we keep on chatting about it. But I've got a, a few questions that I'd like to ask. Um, and then based on your response, let's see where it goes. I'm ready. Okay, good. <laughs> now, you've actually already prepared for the first question because of the activity that you did. Okay. But now, the kids already told you what they think your superpower is. Yes. What do you believe is your superpower? Hmm. I do have eyes at the back of my head. <laughs> so the kids were right, they saw it. <laughs> and they saw it. Uh, you know what? Uh, what is my superpower? It's a difficult question and I love it because, and I'm going to, while you think... I'm positive. Okay, there we go. I don't, I don't I have to stall. No, you don't have to stall. I am positive. Positivity. I think, yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's such, such a powerful superpower to have. Yeah, mostly. I'm positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not say you're like captain yeah. positivity all the time. Mostly, yeah, because at the end of the day, I think all teachers are a bit negative after a long day of time. But having a, a positive disposition towards life in general just increases your 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 enjoyment of your profession, of your job, of your personal life. Of course, yeah. Optimism is powerful. It's really important. Yeah. I mean content is good. Yeah. You don't have to mention names if you don't want to, you can, it's I'll totally up to you. But tell tell us about your favorite teacher when you were at school. When I was at school. Hmm. And what, what made that teacher your favorite teacher? <laughs> okay, so uh, in high school, there were a few, but it was basically um, uh, they just presented so well and you learned so well from them. I can't specifically say a name now, um, but most probably my favorite teacher was Mrs. Uh, Esther Swat. Uh, she was in, uh, I was in grade two in her class. And um, what what is the English word for a vet broiki? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, you're gonna the blue eyed girl. <laughs> I think in the comments tell us because now our, our our English data is busy running out, so yeah. the Afrikaans words are coming through. Yeah, so yeah. I the, so I think that's why I just loved her. She loved me. I loved her. It was just awesome to be in her class, and um, yeah, I think it was the relationship.